Hello and welcome to Warped in Brick. And you see I'm launching this mini space shuttle, which is the focus of the video. And I'm actually using the uh, camera tools. Uh, which, um, yeah, I really like this mod. It uh, allows for uh, way more cinematic uh, shots. So yeah, this is a uh, mini space shuttle. So instead of having a, a, a 5 meter diameter or a 3.75 meter diameter external floor tank, I'm using a 2.5 meter diameter external floor tank and a 1.25 meter diameter solid rocket boosters. And instead of a Mark III a space shuttle, it's a, a, it's a Mark I space shuttle, referring to the size. And now, now the main reason I'm doing this is appara apparently this would be a, a good uh, video idea that would get uh, a decent amount of views. And so, um, like a, like any space shuttle, it's a uh, it's an interesting vehicle to fly. Though actually, it's uh, not as bad as other space shuttles I've built, I mean, because I used a Kerbal Engineer Redux uh, to uh, get uh, to well. Basically, it tells you the uh, torque of the uh, stages, not just the thrust. And so, using that, uh, you can uh, you can make it so that your craft don't spin out of control. Also, originally, I was gonna have the main engine on the actual orbiter, but that uh, didn't end up working. Anyways, we're already in orbit. I can have the pilot go on EVA. I'm using a Orlan EVA suit. From the mod at Antares. Just getting some nice uh, cinematic, just some nice shots of the uh, cur of the Kerbal and the Orbiter, even run an EVA report. And now we can already uh, we can already do our deorbit orbit burn and land. And I'm using the mod trajectories. And to see well my trajectory through the atmosphere. This was only a test flight. The next video there will be a uh, more usage of this uh, space shuttle. And now, and so this is a reentry procedure. Well, first we need to retract the solar panels, and then we yeah, drain the fuel from the uh, from the orbital maneuvering system, because I balanced this thing to uh, glide empty. And I'm also using atmospheric autopilot to uh, have an angle of attack hold. And I found that an angle of attack of 45 degrees is the best for this craft. And, well, because, well, this is GNSQ, and uh, it's a, yeah, like 2.5, well, 2.7 times scale. That means that uh, orbital speed is higher, and uh, that means that uh, re entry. Things are way more likely to explode on re-entry, and even with this angle attack, the uh, RCS, uh, the RCS blocks, their uh, temperature gauge gets to a uh, 91%. But nothing exploded, and uh, now we can uh, continue to descend through the atmosphere. And when I start to uh, pitch down, and I realized. Uh, that uh, I was probably going to overshoot the Kerbal Space Center if I did that. So I'm maintaining this uh, high angle of attack. And, well, and now I think I can just glide it to the Kerbal Space Center myself. So I have to say with the autopilot, I'm actually going to do the uh, descent uh, from the uh, view of the pilot. Fairly soon, I'm going to want to deploy the landing gear, but there's going to be some issues with that, which um, will be revealed later. So I'm just gliding. And I try to deploy the landing gear. And uh, they're not deploying for some reason, I thought that was just the IVA being weird, but um, again, they won't deploy, and uh, 
Uh, if you can, it's hard to see, but um, I was out of electric charge. And landing gear, at least with Kerbalism installed, requires electric charge to extend. And so I'm gonna need to land without landing gear. And now I'm incredibly worried about uh, how fast I'm going. And so I'm going to uh, try to reduce my speed a bit more. And also I'm just bad at landing aircraft in general. Now I'm starting to run out of runway, so I decide to uh, just get onto the ground. This is actually a really good landing. I'm just using the uh, landing gear as skis. Yeah, this was a pretty short video. I want to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And goodbye!